Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on life under lockdown. You know, it's hard to believe it's been about a year since life as we knew it came to a screeching stop. Now we're in this extended period of false starts, delays and phased in reopenings, still uncertain about what comes next. As tough as it's been, those who've survived and are healthy may actually be better off in some ways than before. In March 2020, life as we knew it came to a grinding halt. News headlines were full of the latest shutdowns, from businesses to schools, sports arenas, and even houses of worship. Grim Daily Tales detailed the rising number of COVID-19 cases and deaths. While we sheltered in place to stay safe, it also gave us time to reflect, says psychologist Dr. Jeff Gardier. We talk about post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. I think out of this lockdown, we need to look at post-traumatic growth. How do we come out of this better than ever before? Entrepreneur, actor, and mother of three, Tara Wallace, says this period intensified her belief in the importance of self-care, especially for women. Wallace says we need to stop making excuses for not taking the best care possible of ourselves. You have to prioritize your day. Like, it's it's now our responsibility. So just as well as the medical field and all of these other things are having to have a new responsibility, mm -hmm. so do we. We have a new responsibility. And this is a part of the top five things that you need to get done for the day. We all know now that the pandemic strained our health care system in unprecedented ways. Brave frontline health care workers risk their own lives every day for many months just trying to save coronavirus patients. Hospitals were so overwhelmed that people with other conditions could not get help. The strain on the medical system actually opened the door for innovation, says Dr. Emmanuel Manny Fambu, physician and author of The Future of Healthcare. As a result of a lockdown, I think you see a lot more uh, remote care. Uh, you know, just because of the high risk of people getting infected when they get to the hospital. I think you see a lot more telemedicine, you see more remote patient kind of monitoring, you see more uh, uh, medical care taking place away from the hospital. Let's take it to our panel and find out what going forward looks like. Joining me for this conversation is Dr. Jeff Gardier. He's a clinical psychologist and also professor at Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine. Jeff, great to have you with us. Great to be with you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Also joining us is Tara Wallace. She's an entrepreneur, actor, media personality, and mother of three. Tara, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me back. Thank you so much. Also with us is Dr. Emmanuel Manny Fambu. He's an advisor and investor in de digital health companies in the mental health space. He's a medical futurist. He's also been involved in helping to fight the pandemic and advising doctors on what needs to be done to uh, help us beat this this horrible, horrible virus. Dr. Manny, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Thank you so much. Dr. Jeff, one year, a lot of people thought when the, you know, the clock turned midnight on New Year's Eve, we're 2021 and it's gonna be a whole new thing and not quite there yet. Where, where do you think we're at collectively? I, I think we're where we're supposed to be because we don't know, we've never known in our lifetime what happens with a pandemic. Uh, we're starting to connect the dots, right? Uh, pandemics uh, can happen in a time where there's political instability that then makes that pandemic much, much worse. And, you know, at the time of uh, our talking right now, we're at 500,000 plus deaths with the pandemic. We've seen social injustice as part of it. We've seen uh, partisan politics. We've seen a white uh, 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 rise in uh, white supremacy, uh, all of the isms being out there. Uh, we've seen what's happened in Texas with the meltdown there as far as the infrastructure uh, and certainly we've seen what's going on with uh, global warming and climate crisis so all of these things I believe are very connected in how they happen with one another so we are where we're supposed to be many years later and Dr. Manny will talk about this as a futurist um, when he looks back I know he looks forward but when he looks back then we'll see how all of it made sense and how it all connected. But it doesn't mean that it has to be status quo. We have to continue to push forward, which is what we are doing. We've seen the worst of many things, but we've also seen the best in people too. And that's where we've got to focus. We definitely have to focus on that. So, so many heroes in so many different areas, especially in the, in the healthcare field. 
Tara, in terms of your journey, because we started with you when you were leaving with the kids to get out of New York at the height of the pandemic. In terms of in terms of your career, in terms of your home life, tell us where you're at right now, just in how you're looking at everything. I think that, you know, we just had, uh, what is it, winter break last week with the kids, and they were able to catch up on a lot of work. I think there's a, a huge adjustment to them understanding that they have to uh, be, I guess, as successful as possible and still accountable during this time. Um, one of the things that I've done to not just talk about what they should do is I've started two businesses during this time. Um, a lot of that That's is at home. And I don't know if I would have had the, the opportunity to just focus in the way I have because I have to be at home. And honestly, just kind of, um, I don't want to say staying out of the way, but always trying to do the right thing as much as I can so that I'm not a part of these persons that are, are that are you know, what, like what you see in Atlanta where people are just out and not even really um, acknowledging or accepting that we're still in a pandemic. And sometimes I get questions, uh, are you going to do this? Are you going to do this? And I'm like, guys, we're still in a pandemic. Like, no, we just have to just sit still, you know, get to, you know, like ourselves and be okay with just being still for a little bit. I mean, and at the end of the day, as much as people complain about, oh, you know, I want a day off. I'm like, we've had so many days off, you know, or to be at home. And I think we should just learn to enjoy it. All right. That, that's, a, that's a really good point. Dr. Manny, in terms of where we are now, because you've been on the ground also with this, helping with the hospitals and things like that to, to make them safe and, and, and sanitize them and all kinds of other projects. Where do you see us at now? I think it's a very um, scary time, right? I, I think, uh, you know, the pandemic took a toll on all of us more than, you know, some of us realized what was happening, right? <laughs> Initially, you know, over the summer, when we talked about this, there was still that um, excitement of you don't know what's happening, kind of. So that kind of, the anxiety and that adrenaline rush kind of kept people going. But then after that, it gets really hard, uh, especially when the summer goes away, you have winter, you can get along with people. But I think uh, now with a vaccine uh, here now, I think uh, the future looks bright <laughs> for a lot of people. But uh, it's also a reminder that we will never get back to the way things were before, right? Every single day you hear about a new uh, variation of the virus, right? And it's not strange because everything evolves. <laughs> so viruses will always evolve, <laughs> right? So uh, I don't think there'll ever be a day when things go back to normal. So I think um, this, there'll be a huge psychological play going forward. Don't go away. There's much more to come. Dr. Jeff, what effect does it have on us that what as that realization, I think some people have made it and accepted it and other people are still fighting it. This, But we keep hearing this phrase over and over again. It's not going to go back to what it was. Things, There's no going back to normal. What does that do to us? Uh, I, I think many of us are in a culture shock right now. Um, we have been forced to evolve quicker than what we may have been ready for. Uh, but again, I believe everything is in divine order. Uh, and certainly we didn't want a pandemic to be able to push us forward to deal with social injustice, uh, to deal with oppression, to deal with uh, uh, global warming and all of the things that we have to deal with right now, to deal with uh, corruption in government. But it has forced us to do that as it has forced us to learn other ways to learn uh, through hybrid, uh, online, offline, of course. It has forced us to be able to work from home. It has forced us to learn how to do Zoom. Uh, I was scared to death when I had to do that in teaching my students. Now it's like second nature. Uh, so in many ways, we've taken an evolutionary leap. And many of us are not ready for it psychologically, but as humans and what makes us the preeminent species is that we do... Uh, habituate. We do adapt, and eventually we will be able to catch up to where we are physically. We'll be able to do that emotionally, but that's why we see this tsunami of mental health challenges, not just mental health issues, mental health challenges. And as we address those, and as we talk about them, and as we learn different coping mechanisms and strategies uh, to surviving and to being happy once again, and having some semblance of normalcy, a new normal, uh, then I think we will be okay. Dr. Manny, in, in terms of that never going back to what was, what do you see? That, is that that's is that happening in the in the medical sphere? It, it is, um, and, and something uh, that we talked about, uh, Lisa, previously was 
I've been very passionate, um, you know, about this whole world and discussion about my like healthcare in general around around minority populations, um, right. right? I mean, personally, I mean, my background. I mean, I'm trained as a cardiothoracic surgeon. I mean, that's my area of expertise, right? And I realize the importance of mental health kind of piece as a whole holistic way of uh, looking at people. And I think that the pandemic highlighted something special that majority of people dying were minorities that live in poor neighborhoods. That has been something that's been around for a long time that no one talks about, right? right? Uh, also the idea that getting older and healthier is better than being older and sicker, right? That is a key point. The people that are dying desperately from this and people that are terrified from this mostly are people that fall in those two categories. I think it's a new way for us to rethink how we look at healthcare uh, going forward. So I'm doing a lot of initiatives right now to look across the country to make sure that we are going down to places like in the neighborhoods in Atlanta, in Baltimore, right, Alabama, like all those neighborhoods that no one goes to, to make sure that we have uh, initiatives in place to make people to become more proactive about healthcare, about a more holistic way of being in general. And the separate part of this that we're not talking about is now we use Zoom and we interact with people. I mean, I'm used to like traveling quite a bit, right? So this is the first time I've been in one spot for a long time and I'm getting weirded out, <laughs> <my first time, laughs> right? And so it comes down to that point of, I think Dr. Jeff, you brought this up last time when we spoke about this idea of social distancing, but physical, physical distancing, but not social distancing, right? Which is key. I've not seen a lot of my close friends in a very long time. And I think that's is something that's missing. Yes. And we're coming to that point where we're trying to push people from getting stuck on their phones and computers, right? But the pandemic forced everyone to their phones and computers. Mm -hmm. So the addiction around that piece is another problem that we need to discuss. So I think it's a new way of going. I want to be more proactive about that. Tara, what, what about that in terms, of, in terms of you? Have you had any time for any kind of social life with everything that you're doing and have, go have going on? Um, so I've done like little tricky things. So my friends that I know are, are being tested on a regular basis based on their jobs. You know, um, what I've been doing is buying little gifts for them and making sure I buy things to force them to kind of come over. Like, hey, you know, I get to use like I have children, so please come to my house. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I get them to come over and, you know, I mean, but these are these are the people that we consider in our little bubble. Uh, we, I don't really go outside of that bubble, invite people over, but my friends that I know who are being tested, who are, who are still working, you know, we will come over and, you know, have a glass of wine or I'll buy them something because I'm online shopping. And um, so that'll kind of force us to, uh, you know, just, just, you know, have that, that social, that social right. moment, even if it's just for an hour. So, right. I mean, for me, it's that, it, it makes me feel, it, it makes me feel, you know, I miss going out obviously, but um, it makes it not so bad. I also have another friend who's just not going out at all. So I make sure that, we, you know, we're always FaceTiming at night and um, to the point where it's like, okay, we have to put our phones down and go to sleep. In terms of medically, since we, since we have you, the advantage of your medical expertise, medically where, because people go, well, I have the vaccine. So I basically don't have to worry. Kind of like now I'm Superman or Superwoman and coronavirus can't get me. There's that. And then there's, there's families where some people have been able to have the vaccine, uh, work groups, work settings where some employees have had the vaccine, others, others haven't. What do we have to, is there, is there a certain measurement we have to get to where everyone can go, okay, this is great. We don't have to wear the masks anymore. And, you know, we're pretty much past this. Now, correct. It goes back to that point of, you know, taking the vaccine, uh, wearing a mask, it's not just about you, it's about protecting other people as well, right? So you could have a vaccine and not necessarily get sick, but you could still be someone that carries the virus and you could pass it on to someone else, right? And so it's about, so the ideas of washing hands, face mask, that doesn't change things. Uh, that's one. Two, if you get a vaccine, it's not 100% effective, <laughs> remember, right? So you don't know if yours is 100% effective or it's not a, right? So it didn't work on everyone, right? Uh, and so, we have to be uh, wary of that. Tara, what would you, um, in terms of the, in terms of a feeling of safety, because the kids, you're home, they're homeschooling, right? Right. But, you know, the big issue has been the schools opening, because so many children now have been, haven't been in a regular classroom setting for more than a year. What would make you feel comfortable sending the boys back to, back to school? Um, I, I have a, a real concern because um, where's the other, the oldest two older two boys are 13 and nine and if they need extra help their their teachers are able to set up extra zoom uh, uh sessions with them uh communicate differently with them my concern is gunner who's supposed to be in pre-k right now 
And just as his mom, it's so difficult for us to sit down and focus on some of the things like learning his letters and getting him to write those things. So I'm at a place now, I'm like, am I compromising? Am I going to send him the three days uh, to a school that said they've never had a COVID case? Um, or, you know, are, are, am I going to deal with him getting to kindergarten and just not being prepared? And then what does that look like and how does that affect him uh, for the rest of his life? But also, I think um, my biggest concern is obviously keeping them safe and, and staying out of the way of people who, who are essential workers. But also, I think that it's very difficult now because, as Dr. Manny is saying, for, for me, there's no one-stop shop of information. So people get to say, well, I believe this is a hoax or I don't think it's true. But I think it's because in all of the things and all of the new things that we found, there's no one-stop shop to make people responsible to learn the things and know the things that they need to know, whether it's information about the vaccine, whether it's information of uh, the new findings of COVID, there's just no one-stop shop. So it's all over the place. And it gives people the irresponsibility to say, oh, this is a hoax. And they don't, they don't know, Dr. Jeff, what about that? Because it, that's been since the beginning, because this virus was a new virus. The medical advice initially was, was don't wear a mask, you know, coming from the CDC. So people, after that, people are like, wait a minute, what do we really trust? How real is it? And this is in this climate, coming out of this climate of, you know, fake news, of everything with the news is fake, nothing is real. People can just believe what they want to believe and, you know, make it up as they go along. W what about that? Well, we, all we need to do is look at the 500,000 uh, who are dead, 500,000 plus by the time, uh, you know, we, we are talking about this, uh, you know, uh, throughout the world um, uh, with regard to the deaths just in the United States. Um, there's no denying that. Uh, and I, I think what we have to look at is that, of course, that uh, Black people, Latinx people, Black brown people, uh, those are the ones who've been disproportionately affected uh, by the virus, registered more COVID cases, but also disproportionately um, not getting that virus, disproportionately getting the virus. Right, uh, and dying from it. The vaccine. Right, right. Um, and so um, with that, you know, how are we going to reduce those numbers in the black and brown community? So it is going to have to come down to herd immunity but herd immunity being assisted by the vaccines, uh, by wearing our masks, by doing all of the things that we need to do even after we get the vaccine. I've, had the, I've gotten the vaccine. Many people have criticized me who are part of my peer group, but I say to them, of course, there's benefits versus burdens. There's nothing perfect, but at the end of the day, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Dr. Manny, in terms of in terms of the future, are there any improvements that are going to come as a result of this? Yes, I think you see a lot of improvements um, that will come out of this. There was uh, like one, if, if you look at suicide rates, they've been going up significantly uh, in, in our society in general. Yes. Uh, most That's recently, really too. right? Most recently in Japan, they realized that the, the, the suicide rates among women has been skyrocketing, where they actually appointed a minister of loneliness right that's something that is there yeah, in japan wow. now if you go down to dubai even a couple of years ago when i was there last year where they had a minister of happiness uh you see a lot more people putting more effort and concentration around um mental health and counseling not just drug therapy but counseling as well so i i see psychologists getting very busy um going forward and i see a lot more support groups coming around um, those kind of areas uh, I've seen from the investment side, looking at a lot of companies uh, that will make investments in now, looking at companies that don't only provide telemedicine kind of solutions, but they're bringing in therapists, right? Uh, like a whole holistic way of living as part of healthcare. And I, I think you'll see a lot more of that uh, coming into play uh, in the future going forward. So I think it's great. And can any of that, will any of that be available to, especially in our low income communities of color? That is, that's a good question because um, I was looking at the market report um, from investors the other day and it said all these novel solutions are all based out of like Cambridge, uh, New York, right. uh, and New York, I mean Manhattan, <laughs> like mostly is a part of it, and San Francisco, right? That's where you see all these investments taking place. And so one of the things I'm working on right now is actually creating a heat map around the country to say, look at the number of people that have suffered from this around the country 
we need solutions over there, right? So we need to drive this. So that's uh, one of my top priorities uh, this year. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Life Under Lockdown. You can watch it again and share it with friends on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. I'm Lisa Evers. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all.